<laughs> I mean, I know which one Shmish is. <laughs> I, I can feel how heavy it is. I know what it is. It's like, it's like, oh, I wonder what it is. It sounds like a liquid. <laughs> Yes. Oh my god. Wait, how the fuck? Did I talk about this later? Wait, did I? Oh. I don't remember talking about that flavor, but that's like my second favorite flavor. <laughs> I can't never mind. I was surprised. <laughs> my bad. I'm being an asshole, huh? And then, um, and then they were out of my heavy cola. <laughs> and didn't tell me, so you get in this instead. No, I fucking love that flavor. Oh my god, I fucking can't wait. I should go put that in the freezer before I do anything else. Uh, hopefully this isn't gonna come down here. Shit, no, it comes with. Oh. This is classified as health and beauty. <laughs> that was on. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the receipt. It actually says bang energy drink with zero calories and high caffeine champagne, uh, sixteen fluid ounces, twelve count, vital pharmaceuticals, health and beauty. I fucking knew it. That's why I'm so fucking cute. <laughs> and then and then I got this letter. Oh, but um, I don't think I should read letters on this because it's kind of personal, so I won't do that. But I got one. Oh, I know who sent me this. I could tell it already by the art. Oh, hell yeah. Cool, I'm gonna enjoy reading that right after this. And then I'm excited for that. And then... Oh, I got stickers. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Oh, my name is Elmo. <laughs> Moist, because at least one person you know hates this word. <laughs> List of daddies. These are so cool. Oh, fuck. I gotta find the other stickers. I <laughs> like oatmeal. <laughs> the Dorito. <laughs> what the fuck? Ziggy. Oh my god. Wait, does it doesn't tell me who sent this, though. These are so good. They smell really good too. I know it's really weird, <laughs> but they smell like they just, they, got, they just got printed. Oh my goodness, that's fucking. Oh, and I got this box. I mean, I got it for myself, so I already know what it is, but. Oh shit, I just ripped right open. I'm sorry if that was loud. I got me some jump ropes. And some, some hopscotch. And there's my knife. Yo, it kind of looks like they like stepped on this box, by the way, so. I hope the, what's inside's not ruined. There's like other things that I wanted to wait for, but it would have taken a little bit, so I'll just do like a part two QA and unboxing, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's a fucking letter. Let's go. I fucking love letters. It's in purple. Oh my god, your handwriting is so fucking good. Holy shit. Okay, so I'm not the. <gasps> Gummy bears. What is this? Is this a flask holder? Oh, hell yeah, melted gummy bears. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. They're still really hot. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my 
forget I could press on it. Okay, I'm gonna record a video of this. Hold on, one second. <laughs> I'm gonna use one of the bang cams too. Okay, video. <laughs> okay. Oh, dang it. That makes me so sad. You know, maybe I can make like one big gummy bear if I put it on like a clump, you know? Alright, I'll put it, I'll, I'll like hang this up on something so that. My back is super tight here. It's just about to fall off. <clears throat> Bob Ross treatments? <laughs> what? <laughs> This is really cool. I should. I fucking wish. I wish I did these for like all the other things that people got me, cause they were so fucking cool. And my reactions were literally like, <laughs> actually treatments. <laughs> Ooh, this one's good. Oh, and then they're kind of crushed. No, is it because it's hot? Yeah, I'm gonna put this in the freezer maybe, cause it, it's it's literally turning to dust. Yeah, just be careful with that one. Fucking sick. I got a dino nugget hoodie. It's so pink. Oh, when the gym reopens and it's cold again, I'm gonna wear this to the gym all the fucking time. Oh my god, this looks so fucking nice. state this is <laughs> like, I literally don't know what state this is uh, it looks like um it looks like a fucking key what the fuck is a key uh fuck that shit oh what's this oh you got me a face mask too I could put this over my other face mask so that way I look cute as fuck A nano filter? It comes with a filter? Holy fucking shit, dude. I feel so fucking lucky, dude. I swear. I fucking swear. Like, I have like a 10 Lux set that I have people who. Oh my god. This is so fucking cool. It's like a copper mask. I fucking love it. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send a picture to my mom. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> be like, mom, look. You just find permanent marker. What? I thought this was like a keychain or something. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you got me perfume? What? Maybe that's part of the letter. Let me just take a quick look. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, that is very cute. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, what the fuck? Alright, let me. Oh, fuck. It's, oh, I thought it spilled for a second. Let me be careful. Oh, wait. It's, it, what the heck? Oh, my God. Because it's so hot, the seal, like, melted. I gotta stand this up or everything's gonna leak out. Maybe that's why the box is kinda wet. Alright, let me um put this right here. Jesus, it's how fucking hot it is. Everything melted. <laughs> no way. Oh no, it's leaking. Fuck. Bath and Body Works men collection. Fuck, I gotta put this in the freezer real quick. Hold on. Ugh. <laughs> so cool. No fucking way, dude. Fuck. I don't want it to leak. Let me get like this. Oh. I have so many boxes right now. I'm just paying real quick. I'm going to this. Whoa. Oh, 
fuck yes, dude. This is so fucking cool. Man, I wish I really recorded all the other reactions too, man. I'm so bummed. <clears throat> I got sick of it before. <sighs> Ooh, cookie dough bites. Is it melted too? Yeah, <laughs> it's melted too. Damn it. Try them frozen if it well, I have to do that because everything's melted. It's fucking hot as fuck here. Alright, let's do that. Perfect, that's all done. And then I'll <coughs> and then all these letters I'm gonna read by myself because I don't know if they want me to read them or not. And now now it's time to do the QA. I gotta I think like I skimmed through it before I did this. I got a lot of the same um, questions, uh, so actually I'm gonna use my normal mic because I don't know the quality of this right now. So let me hit. Please tell me I recorded. I think. Well. Okay. Oh well, this really sucks. The anonymous um, website that I'm using, that I used, to have people to ask me questions, uh, is not secure, and it looks like it expired yesterday. <laughs> <coughs> so that's really fucking unlucky. Because that's where all the questions were. Um, so yeah, there I'll, I'll wait until it comes up. Damn, that fucking sucks. Right, a lot of the questions were like the same anyway, so... I'll just um read them off real quick. Just to sum the, the few that I have. Um, skincare routine is okay. Uh, I had like a bunch of rashes on my face that I took care of first before I used anything else, so... I'll let you know once I start using the real shit. I just wanted to get like a base first. Um, that's just a meme. <laughs> and then, um, audio equipment. I mean, it depends. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of things that go into it, I suppose. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, a Yeti is basically a good all-around podcast, gaming, and, I don't know, talking to friends type of mic for very cheap, um, depending on how committed they are. There's a bunch of other things that are probably more important, um, but, but, yeah, it depends on the podcast, I guess, and if they're committed. It, it would take too long to answer, so I guess I'll talk to you later about that. Um, well, this fucking sucks, dude. Why the fuck is the website down? Alright, and then DMs. <laughs> okay. I think this was a question before I did the thing. Um,. <clears throat> Wait, what? Oh, uh, I'm like an hour away from the ocean. I'm like an hour away from everything. I just do a dry heat. <laughs> yes. Um. Where did you get the idea to make audios like this? I've never seen anything like this or done remotely. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's no way that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. <clears throat> um, I mean, I don't know if you've listened to, like the other guys' audios. I'm sure they do them just as well, but that means a lot to me. Like I, <laughs> I'm excited now. Mm, okay. Ah, uh, sorry. Anyway, um. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Focus, 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 focus. Um, I, I think I talked about it before. I know there's other questions about why I got into audio making, but um, uh, friends have liked my voice, a few more friends, um, and then like partners have always said I was pretty good at like phone sex and things like that and this sort. And one of my friends, um, we were just talking about like whatever, and <coughs> I mentioned like uh hearing an audio like on reddit and wanting to do like the opposite of it you know instead of being the girl who does it be the guy who does it and see if it like 
I don't know. Just do it for fun and not really expect anything out of it. And and I enjoyed it. And I was able to talk about like my fantasies or things that I've done and flesh it out and talk to people who aren't too experienced in it and let them know it's not that scary. <coughs> people like read books on it and it's not that serious. <laughs> Literally all you do is communicate with your partner, know what you like, uh, practice, you know, safety, you know, and and have fun like obviously it is a bit deeper and but that doesn't have to do with like the type of things i'm into but it's more of like uh, like i don't know shadow work and making sure that you're okay with who you are and try to kill your ego before any of that that's that has nothing to do with what i make or audios or whatever if if you're secure with who you are and your partner's secure with who they are then there's literally nothing else you need to worry about um what fictional characters are role model to you and why? That's a question that's going to take some time to think about. Uh, <coughs> a, a role model to me and why? A role model. Someone who I look up to. Someone who I think, yes, I want to be that person. Yes, I... I this oh man that's i'll come back to that because i'm not i'm not really sure i might come up later <laughs> thank you if i could travel to any era of time to experience it in any way in any in any way you choose uh right, cool, cool 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 all right so obviously if i would have to change my skin color so i wouldn't get killed or lynched or whatever like and attacked in any way and i could just go anyway uh, just to experience, do I have to live there? Where would you go? Where would I go? Uh, any, I would go to the future. <laughs> what the fuck? Why would I go to the past? Like, I, I'm so comfortable with what I have now. Like, I would go, uh, like a hundred years in the future and see what's up. Just see, like, you know, if we're all dead yet. Um, bring back a new disease or some shit. I don't know. Something, something horrible would happen. I already know. It's, this is a, this is a movie. Like, but if I have to go back in time, uh, huh? <laughs> That's like a. I I don't really like fantasize about that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I I kind of like where I'm at. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I think it's like there's that saying, right? Too born too early to. Uh, traverse the seas. Uh, I don't know. Born too late to traverse the seas and born too early to navigate the stars, you know. But I just, I don't really, I'm not really like a historical porn kind of person where I look back and I'm like, ah, that would have been cool. But I would like to go to the future just to see what's up. Uh, that's basically the same as the other question. Um, I just, like in the beginning audios were different right like how i made them were different like my experience with audios were different my experience in the world is normal right it's always going to be there but as i'm going on and getting new equipment and figuring out new ways to make it seem more fun and more real and more me because that's essentially it right it's i it's me and these audios you know and I spoke on it before, like, when an audio doesn't do good or, or, or I know it's, like, not doing as well on, like, Pornhub or something, it used to feel like a rejection because it was a rejection of me because this audio is me, you know, and who I am and what I want and things like that, so. I don't know. Did, did, did I go off on a tangent? Uh, yeah, okay, anyway. I'm not focused right now. I haven't had caffeine, so my mind's kind of... But, but I just got a bunch of bangs. <laughs> so I'm going to throw those in the freezer. Um, let's see. What's my favorite nostalgic comfort food? I, I, have, a, I have a few of them, for sure. Um, but recently, like, I mean, I've talked about how I, I have memories attached to pretty much any, everything that I have. You know, like headphones that my friend got me or... Or cologne that someone recommended me, or 
uh, <laughs> clothes that someone bought me, you know, which is why I can't really wear clothes that I got from like an ex. I kind of just throw all that stuff away. Not because like I hate them. I've had very good relationships and they've all, we're all still friends. But, um, like, uh, like, so with food, it's <coughs> just, it's just the same. So like whenever I have certain foods, I'm reminded of a memory. And so chilequiles is something my dad made for me once when I was like 12, 13 ish. And he's never made it before. And he's never really home. So when he was home and he made that, I was like, mm, what's this? You know, <laughs> I guess there's another weird thing that he made me. It was like, oh, wow. I can't remember it. It'll come back though. Um, but he made me that and I fell in love with it and that's all I ever wanted for like a week straight and then I kind of got sick of it but this past year I've been eating it every so often and feeling it <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I will definitely keep the ledger private what well, got me into weightlifting I uh, just wanted to be healthy and um, like push my body to what it you know what it was capable of like, I wanted to, I, w I didn't want to, like, be 50 and never had had a peak where I pushed my body to where I absolutely, you know, couldn't, like, sustain, like, at another, I don't know if that makes sense, but, but, but yeah, <laughs> um, <coughs> I, it, and at first it was rough, and when I see new people go, and they go with their friends who are super athletic and super into it they make the mistake of pushing their friend to their same routine as fast as possible because they know you know what's up and results but then that person ends up not ever coming back again because they can't move at all the next day like it's so it's like when people get into you know weightlifting it's it's better to waste two years getting no results but getting used to it you know because honestly that's how i kind of teach my friends is like like just come with us hang out joke around <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, we're going to be on our machines. We're not gonna, I'm not going to push you too hard. You know what I mean? Like, because cause if I push you to do 10 reps this, 10 reps that, three sets of this, you know, intervals, hypertrophy training, you know, then they're going to be like, the next day in a week, they're going to be like, uh, I'm good. I don't want to go anymore. I can't fucking move, you know? But if, like, you, like, like, just go slow <laughs> you know get them into the routine of waking up at a certain time every morning and going there for an hour or two <coughs> eventually they're gonna be like i'm not getting results and i'm like yeah it's because you're not training hard enough and you're not eating right but you're now in you're now into like the mindset of like i want to fuck shit up you know because they'll go they'll, they'll make slight improvements and then they'll be like oh fuck like why are you deadlifting 300 and i'm stuck at like 75 for this whole year i'm like well you know now we can get into it like it's not gonna take two years obviously but it depends on the person but yeah i don't know is that, is that even the question why did i get into the weightlifting <laughs> uh, yeah. oh because i'm a man <laughs> i don't fucking know i just like weightlifting it's it's fun it helps me like um it helps me zone out that's that's the thing right like there's there's other types of working out you know like i've been doing calisthenics but i fucking hate it i can't get in the zone i can't it may maybe later on in a month from now I might feel different, but it like I like to be able to you know focus on something else, listen to an audio book, listen to a, <coughs> a podcast or a song, and just feel that and be able to like zone out and just do something, and and deadlifting and like lifting weights is easy to do that you know, it's there's not many things you really have to focus on other than like safety and concentrating on like your movements and stuff but then once that becomes ingrained it's it's not hard uh, anyway <coughs> um what's my favorite sauce to dip dino nuggets and i know this is an anonymous question but <laughs> oh i wonder what's this question <laughs> like oh my god i don't know <laughs> oh well, we should do other things up yet uh mm, it changed it used to be ranch and then it was barbecue sauce and then it was sweet and sour but I think my go-to is barbecue. I know the website's not up yet. What the fuck, dude? Why is lavender my favorite color? Why aren't you active on your Twitter? Uh, I'm not a social media person, and I know it's probably detrimental to me um, 
being seen, you know, and being able to devote more time to it. But it, it's really hard when you're not a social media person to, you know, know what to say to get more traction on a social media platform that you have no idea about, you know, like, uh, I just, what the fuck do I do? Like, <laughs> I, I just don't know. It's like, I feel like if I do Twitter, I'll get zero likes and zero retweets and talk to the void, you know? And, uh, can I remember my first Patreon subscriber? Yeah, I remember like my first couple. You were one of them. <laughs> like you were, you were very early. Um, and thank you so much for that. Um, do you think you would ever do it another audio maker, female or male? I mean, I've talked, like one of the dudes who asked me for advice sometimes mentioned he wants to make an audio with me in the future. So we'll see how that goes, you know, but, um, I'm sure we can create something pretty fucking cool together. Uh, but yeah, female, male, I don't really, yeah, 100%. There's no, there's no like doubt in my mind that it'll happen one day. You know, I just, I'm not looking for it, but if it happens, yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, I'll probably end up making like porn videos in the future too, with like a partner or something on a separate channel if that ever happens. I don't know. I just, I like making like. BDSM rough kind of content. Um, okay, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit about what's, why is lavender your favorite color? Um, it's simple. It's I used to play Super Nintendo 64, Smash Brothers, um, all the time, and my go-to character was Link. And there's a uh, four-color panel where if you like, up was like blue, right was red, down was green or something, or or down was uh, lavender, yeah, so he has a he had a lavender set, and I don't know why they chose lavender. I don't think there's any lore behind lavender or any games that have lavender, but they had lavender, and I remember just picking that color every single fucking time, and it kind of just like stuck with me, and I just like the um, pastel lavender aesthetic, you know, like that's pretty much it. <laughs> Nothing crazy, an irrational fear of yours. <coughs> What is a totally irrational fear of yours? I mean, when I was 14, it was the dark. But then I'm not scared of the dark anymore. After I watched it, it was the shower drain. But I stopped being scared of horror movies. Um... Like, like the unknown is, I guess, irrational, right? Because I'm scared of that for no reason. Um, hmm. I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm scared of nothing, but irrational fear is a reason. There's like no reason to be scared of it, right? So. Let me see, let me look at it. Examples of irrational fears. <coughs> hmm. God, that cologne's like on my fingers. It smells pretty good though. Um. <laughs> uh, that used to be my fear too. I used to think I was part of the Truman Show, but I was like f ten at that time. I don't know. Of oh, some kind of age, I I don't really have them anymore. I guess. I mean, I'm sure I'll figure it out and I'll come back like a month later and type it in the comments. Oh, my rational fear is this, but I <coughs> I just stopped like being afraid of things. Um, like <coughs> like I'll intentionally dangle my feet off the edge of my bed because I'm to like because I used to be scared of that. And and then I realized, oh, none of that's real. I'm going to be fine. If it was real, they would have gotten me, like, when I was a lot younger. So I turn off all the lights. I don't worry about that, you know. And then I open all my windows, you know what I mean? Like, like open the, the closet door because people are scared of that. I dangle my feet off the bed because people are afraid that you're going to get pulled by something. But in my head, it's like, if that had happened, it would have happened by now, so... I, I don't know. I don't really have an irrational fear, I guess. I'm sure you're going to think that's bullshit, but 
Um, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I'm very curious the girl in your stories will you please describe her I there there's not a girl in my story it's just um I don't really picture like a girl <laughs> like there's not there's not a person in general I I don't really give them features usually it's just like a a blob <laughs> like <laughs> imagine me doing stuff to a blob thing I don't do that on purpose because it's supposed to be like a I don't know. I just, I just, I don't have a girl who I describe her that I think about. Um, was there a story, folk tale, or superstition that you heard when you were little that still sticks with you today? <laughs> um, no, I don't really believe in those things, uh, so they don't scare me. Um, my parents never really told me horror stories. My mom used to tell me horror stories of like what happened when, to like, when she was a kid and stuff like that, and like. Uh, like her friends stepping on landmines, you know, um, and ghost stories, but I don't particularly have any, like, thing that I'm scared of, like, I remember having weird instances as a kid, but then I was a kid, and I don't really trust my memory from back then, um, but, uh, I don't know, let me, let me try to think. <sighs> Yeah, no, I'm just not superstitious in that in that way. Like I, I just I think I'm. Yeah, I just <laughs> is that weird? I just don't think that anything could hurt me other than another, another human being. Uh, fuck! I should have got water. <coughs> Have I traveled anywhere outside of your home country, where you currently reside? Uh, I got to go to China in 2000. Ooh, uh, fave and least fave birthdays. Um, I actually don't celebrate my birthday, and that's not cause like any reason. Like I want to celebrate my birthdays, but um, when I was a kid, all the way to you know, by the like the time that I had with my family, I I we didn't celebrate my birthday. We celebrated my my brother's birthday like when we were young, but not my birthday. Um, and I get like presents sometimes from my friends, but like. I don't really celebrate it. Um, oh, oh, you know what? No, okay. My favorite birthday was this birthday. Uh, because I told everyone on Discord that I don't usually celebrate my birthday. And they all, like, surprised me with gifts. And <laughs> and <laughs> there's really, really cool things. And every day I feel lucky, right? Every single day, like, I... When I get a message or a really cool response or like a heartfelt message and I get like a gift and a bunch of really cool things, I I feel so fucking lucky. And then and then I got a bunch of really fucking cool gifts. That's my favorite birthday. <laughs> and not because the other birthdays I didn't celebrate, just because it was it was definitely special to me. Yeah. Thoughts on the musical Hamilton. It's not my favorite, but I do like it. Uh, what is my favorite musical? I think High School Musical. <laughs> Next question. Um, okay, anyway. No, I do. There's a shit ton of musicals that I really want to go to, but it would take too long to really talk about. Um, huh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's this one dude who was in Hamilton. Um, well, I mean, a couple people have been in. You know, I don't want to talk about it. It'll take too long. Uh, if I could learn any language you don't already know, which would it be? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I kind of want to learn Latin. Um, but I think for me, a language that I want to learn is because I want to go to this place a lot. Um. either be Japanese or Korean because I really want to go there for the food and then bring that food back here you know what I'm saying um, how did you get into making audios I mean it's not too late but it's just, I, I've, I think I've answered this so I'm not sure um, 
I just I don't know. Maybe I was supposed to make RDS. I have no idea. Uh, sorry about this ramble. You're about to read. <sighs> Laser in question is just a ramble. Rather than been explaining it well. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for the message. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know you don't know who I'm talking about or if I'm talking about your message that you sent me, but I do read all the messages. And okay. Anyway, um, <coughs> my favorite flavor popsicle. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? I haven't had a popsicle in so long. I would say the blue one. Is that a flavor? Blue Bay. Um, what's the ca super casual way to encourage your partner to choke you? Ah, oh, wow. Uh, kind of get lucky and find a partner who's open to that and isn't insecure. Cause a lot of what a lot of the time they'll think that you know someone hurt you because you're into this, the things that you are. Um, what was I saying? Is Everything comes back to the same answer. It's communication. If you don't have communication, you don't have anything. And if that's what you're realizing now in your relationship, it's not too late. You know, if you're four years in, it's not too late. You just have to be brave enough to be like, I love you. I love this and who we are. But we need more or we're not going to last, you know. And not to say that you don't want to be with them. But if you don't communicate with your partner and you feel unsafe communicating to them because they're going to get mad, that's on you in a sense and on them because it doesn't, because like if you're able to talk to each other, of course, someone's going to get a little bit irritated, but you just have to find ways to like navigate that and establish a healthy level of communication. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't get my partner to choke me. Uh, it's just that if, if. If he won't choke you, then he's probably not good at other things, or she's not good at other things. Like, if you're afraid to tell your partner that you want to be choked, you're probably afraid to tell your partner how you want to be eaten out, or where you want to be touched, or bitten, or things like that, and that's not good. You know? Like, communication isn't just for sexual gratification, it's for, like, mental stimulation, and knowing when's okay, and what's not okay, and, you know, and figuring out your, it's like, it's like figuring out your love language, you know? Like, if, if you don't communicate it, if you don't, I mean, that's not, ah, oh fuck, I mean, it's, it's super complicated, right? It's super complicated. I mean, just because your partner's not kinky doesn't mean you're not communicating. Like, it's like, what if they don't want to do it? Well, I mean, if they, I don't know. It just depends on every, every person's different, right? I'm not a fucking relationship guru. What the fuck do I know? <laughs> I just know that I've had very healthy relationships, and I'm friends with all my, my exes, most of them. So it's like. I remember, and actually, when I was in high school, my ex-girlfriend keyed my car. <laughs> See? Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Oh, and then she poured tea down my computer. Yeah. But, I mean, I wasn't the best boyfriend either, but that doesn't, you know, <laughs> that doesn't mean you should key my car. <laughs> I just didn't want to go to Disneyland that day, okay? Fuck. Anyway. um, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm not a relationship guru. I don't fucking know. You know, if your partner's not kinky, then, I mean, they should, you know, I mean, shouldn't your partner want to, like, do things for you? Like, I don't fucking know. I've ne I'll never have that issue, so I'm not, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I wish I, I wish I knew the answers. Um. Just, yeah, maybe just slowly, slowly get weirder with them or watch porn with them. Because if you get if you go too fast, they're gonna think you're cheating on them or some stupid insecure shit. Just communicate, right? Just be like, "Fucking, I don't like it when you talk to me this way. I don't like it when you ignore me. I don't like it when you know I ask you a question and it takes you like a minute to answer, or whatever." And then you know, figure out why they do the thing they do, and if you could figure out a, a common ground and you know, a common place thing, I don't. I don't fucking know, dude. No, man. Yeah. Ooh, my way, got five geese now. Uh, is the other website up yet? Fuck. 
It's really hot. I'm sorry. Uh, ooh, I got a text. Let's see if they're asking me a question. Hmm. They want to play video games. But I don't really want to play video games. Alright, the anonymous question thing for some reason is down. So I'll probably do a part two. Um, I hope this audio is okay and that I don't sound weird or too Cali ish because it's hot and I was just talking to my friends and I become gamer boy, you know what I'm saying? Um, and shit like that. Uh, is there any other questions? No, wait, someone asked me a question before, and I don't remember how far back it was. Hmm. Let me look for it real quick. Hmm. If you guys send me DMs, stop deleting them. <laughs> like, I see them. It's just like, I don't respond right away. <laughs> you know, and then it makes me confused because I forget who asked. And I'm just like, well, fuck. Um. Oh, that's a good question. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me let me Google that real quick just to make sure that it, if I can get them all through here instead. Didn't show up. I'm gonna try Google real quick. Maybe it's in my email. No. And oh wait. Oh yeah, that's where you sent me those questions. Okay. Um. Huh. Oh no, you sent to me on Patreon, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. Okay. 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 <laughs> What makes a good daddy, Dom? I mean, what makes a good boyfriend? What makes a good partner? You know? Someone who <clears throat> knows what your love languages are. And this isn't, this should be vice versa, too. You should do the same thing for them, you know? Well, what, what makes a good boyfriend? What makes a good friend? You know? Or someone who listens to you? Someone who actively listens to you? Someone who's who's there for you, you know, not that they're busy at work and don't have time for you. That's that's you know extenuating circumstances. You know you shouldn't go to your best friend who's a, like just because your boyfriend's at work. You know what I mean? Like he'll be, he'll be there for you. You know what I mean? Just because he's busy, because people forget that. You know, like what makes a good boyfriend? Someone who's there for you, cares about you, listens to you. You know, like remembers things about you, like. Gives you quality time, takes you out, makes you feel loved, you know. You know, gives you your quality time, your physical touch, your words of affirmation. Who doesn't talk down to you, you know, and vice versa. Like, what makes a good girlfriend, you know? Like, you you have to be that person for them, for them to be that person to you. Um, and then once you have that down, what makes a good daddy, Dom? Because it's, you know, just a bit different, right? Like, what makes a good dom, you know? Someone who is assertive, aggressive, but isn't, like, an asshole. And isn't, like, a rapist. You know what I mean? Like, people like to uh, mistake cockiness and um, narcissism with someone who's confident in themselves and, you know, a good person. And sure of himself, you know, uh, they're very different, and you find that out pretty quick, um, so it's usually someone who is willing to work at your pace, you know, doesn't give you, like, a stupid rule, like, you have to do whatever I say, no matter what, you know, because that's just someone who's inexperienced and watches a lot of porn, um, 
you don't have to be into the scene or go to any clubs to be a good daddy dom. And in action, in actuality, a lot of those doms too are actually just as bad as the ones you'll find on Fat Life, ones who watch a lot of porn and fantasize, or who read books and don't realize those are fantasies. You know what I mean? And then girls will do that too. They'll read the fantasy, they'll read a book, they'll be like, "Oh, this person knew exactly what the girl wants." That's not. That's really, really happens. <laughs> you know, you have to communicate. You know, like you could have sexual chemistry, but you still need to communicate. Um, so it, it's someone who understands that if you're not experienced and neither are they, that you could do research together, figure out things that you like together, figure out safe words, you know, figure out limits. Yeah, cause sometimes there'll be something that sounds really fun, you know, that you think you want and then you try it and it terrifies you. Um, so someone is patient, you know, but then you have to be the same way. Like uh, the thing with relationship questions is, people want the other person to be their exact, perfect person, but do you deserve that person? Are you that person for them, or are you just you know, not that great? But you think you deserve everything. And I mean, like, are you snarky sometimes? Are you just too sarcastic? Like, like is I mean, those aren't bad qualities. You just need someone who is okay with that, who fits that, someone who fits you, and your personality and. I don't know. You need to be just as good as a partner to them as they are to you. Um, when did you know for sure that something was you liked? Uh, it made me really hard, <laughs> and I wanted to try it, and I came really hard. Um, how would you approach someone about sharing this kink with you? Uh, wait, what do you mean? Um, how would you approach someone about sharing this kink with you? Huh? Okay, I'm going to take that in three different ways. <coughs> um, let me see if the other website works. It doesn't. Okay. How would I go about sharing my kinks? Well, I'm confident, and I know what I like. And most of the partners that I attract, well, they come to me, usually. Um, so I don't really hunt that often or ever. Um, so when they do come to me, uh, they're usually pretty submissive. Um, uh, so it'd be pretty easy. Um, a lot of people like to mistake a woman who's confident and a badass bitch in the business world and with her, and her, with her friend group. You know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of girls who are just badass bitches who are fucking, like, don't need anybody to tell them what to fucking do. You know what I mean? They're just, they have everything on lock, you know? They'll probably, they'll probably in the future make more money than their husband or their boyfriend or whatever. And they just need to be, their partner just needs to be okay with that, you know? People mistake a powerful woman as, like, a dom when, in actuality, a lot of those women, in my experience just want to be tied down, slapped, spanked, choked, you know, have their head pushed down into the bed and just used, you know, like they just want to feel like an object. And then afterwards, there's respect. If you don't respect your partner, what do you have? You know, if you don't feel respect from your partner, what do you have? If your partner talks down to you, he doesn't respect you. You know, if he doesn't take your ideas into consideration and be like, huh, I didn't think about it that way. If he shoves his own opinion down your throat, you know what I mean? He's, you know... <laughs> All of this stems from self-love and knowing who you are. Knowing what you want. Because who you are is is beautiful. And I know you have this head inside your voice saying, Oh, I'm not good enough. Or you blah, blah, blah. You have this voice constantly telling you that you're not enough. You know, because you haven't dealt with your shadows yet. And... And maybe you just have a a brain that kind of sucks and is kind of an asshole, you know. But uh, <laughs> I shouldn't be making it. I shouldn't be doing a TED talk. Um. Yeah. Once you figure that out, once you go on that self journey, you'll be confident enough to realize that it's a separate. It's a separate part of you, but it's still you. You know. Like. Yeah. And once you figure that out, everything else falls into place. You just, a lot of people have an ego. 
you know, and they see one thing as fact, and no one knows anything. Um, so I usually have no issues with sharing kinks with someone because I'm very open, and I'd be like, I like this, I like that, I like this. It's fucking hot. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but when someone comes to me, I have to facilitate them by saying things like, you know, like, do you want me to do this? Do you want me to like, like, do you want a golden shower? Is there something you want? Like, you know, and and be straight faced about it. Do you want me to like, I don't know, like, drop a load on you? Like, I've never had a partner that want, wanted to do that, and I don't particularly want to do that. But you have to be serious about it because if that is something that they want and you make fun of them, they're never going to be open to you. They're never going to open themselves up with you because you will shut them down immediately. You know, so like if you find yourself doing that, you just got to be like, oh, like, I apologize. I thought you were just joking. But if that's something you want to do, I'm, I'm down with it. I've never had a partner who wants to do that. Um thankfully i guess but i really like don't mind if they did i'm very open with that with anything you know so it's like that and then that they they usually go no and i go okay uh, i'm being serious though do you want me to wear a clown mask because that's pretty out there and it's a very niche thing that someone would like and they'll be like what and like and that's just a way to be like I- i'm your partner i'm willing to be open with you this is a safe place you know what i mean i've never given them a reason to not feel safe so talk to me you know if you want to do things in public if you want to be at like say a dining table or at a gathering or at a park or tied down or spanked or wax or you know blood play or knives or you know like slapping or spanking or caning or a number of things it just slowly leads to that if you're just learning, you're just going to go with the basics and, and progress further and further and further. You know, especially when it's with someone you trust and someone who trusts you. You know? And... Oh God, this is so fucking in-depth. Like, I'm sure there's some of you who are going to say, what about this? I mean, this is... I'm, trying, I'm not trying to make a three-hour audio, okay? So forgive me if I leave something out. But maybe in the future, I'll, I'll do like a... Daddy 101, <laughs> Dom 101, like type of a situation where we go through the basics, go through the steps, you know, step one, safety, <laughs> step two, uh, that sounds kind of cool to me, um, and then uh, there's a third version of that that I've, oh, and a third version, how would someone go about approaching me with the king that they want, just tell me, I don't know you. I'll probably never meet you, but I'll get to know you through here, and that's awesome, you know, like, there's no face-to-face interaction here, there's no, there's no stupid societal bullshit or societal, like, pressures forcing us to act one way with another, you can literally just tell me, can you make me an audio where, where, like, you, you, you say this to me, or you say that to me, or you degrade me, or, or like kidnap me, or um, I don't know, just anything, <laughs> and I will never judge you, I will literally never judge you, because I'm open to pretty much anything and everything, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, do you think that if someone likes to be called daddy in bed, they could be a DD, a daddy dom? Not particularly. Um, <clears throat> that's not to say they couldn't emulate it, but it's not someone who it comes naturally to and something that they crave. Because, like, say you had a boyfriend who liked, who would eat you out but didn't like it, you know? And then say you had a boyfriend who loved eating you out and you could feel it and you could hear it, you know? There's a difference. There's enthusiasm. There's a natural affinity towards it. You know, they're both nice. You know, but one's one craves it, and the other will emulate what you want. You know, like you can't make someone into something, right? And you shouldn't want to do that. 
But if you both, you know, learn more about it and get used to it and maybe you'll both, maybe it's something that they do want, you know, and it's something that they just never felt comfortable with because extenuating circumstances, they could be a pretty good DD. You know, you never, I wouldn't count it out. I just wouldn't say it's likely. Um, And being called daddy is kind of mainstream now anyways. Like, So it's like, um, yeah, no, I, I think, I think that's pretty, pretty concise, right? There's a difference between someone who eats you out and someone who loves eating you out. <laughs> There's a difference between someone who likes to be called daddy and someone who is daddy, you know, someone who knows what to do, knows what they like, knows how to control the situation, you know, like, cause then, cause then. There's, oh my god, there's so many fucking levels to this. Fuck it, I'm done. I'm gonna go get food. Uh, this is my shitty TED talk. Okay, bye. No, I'm not ending it like that. There's no fucking way I'm ending it like that. All right, bye. <laughs>